is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory, victory is mine. Victory, victory today is mine. Oh, I chose Satan, Satan. Oh, victory today is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, Satan, get thee behind. Happiness today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy, y'all. Joy is mine. Joy, joy today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. Oh, I fell down on my knees. I said, Lord, help me, please. I got up singing, shouting, victory, oh, victory is mine, victory, victory is mine, victory, victory, today is mine, oh, I don't say not, say not, let me behind, oh, victory today is mine, peace. Peace is mine. Peace today. Peace today is mine. Oh, I just say not, say not. Get thee behind. Oh, peace today is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness, y'all. Happiness is mine. Happiness. Happiness today is mine. Oh, I do say it on, say it on, get thee behind. Happiness today is mine. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. Oh, I fell down on my knees. I said, Lord, help me, please. I got a singing, shouting, victory, oh, victory is mine, victory, victory is mine, victory, victory today is mine, oh, I told Satan, Satan, oh, victory today is mine, victory is mine. Victory, victory is mine. Victory, victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, Satan, get thee behind. Oh, victory today is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness, happiness is mine. Happiness, happiness today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, Satan, get thee behind. Happiness today is mine. Oh, come on now, put those holy hands together. Give God some praise all over the sanctuary, all in this holy place. Give God some praise. We thank our lead vocalist this morning 
Sister Pearl Sims, who stood and told us that victory is mine. Uh, is that not your testimony? And let me sum it up for you. What she's saying, Sister Ridgeway, is defeat is a thing of the past. Uh, what she just told us, Sister Allen, is victory is mine today. Uh, Sister Jeta, we're no longer defeated because victory is mine. Uh, Brother JD, uh, tell your son uh, that victory is mine how can we say that because God restored the victory back unto us. Uh, you see, the enemy tried to take it away. Uh, but you know what? God took it from him uh, through his son, Jesus, and gave it back to us. Uh, and now victory is mine. Our call to worship this morning is coming from Psalms 118 and 24. And it says, this is the day. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, yes, Lord, no matter what come my way, this is still the day that the Lord has made. Uh, and I will rejoice. You know why? Because He loved me that much. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. Hey, Amen. Our next song is good to see you, Green Bubble. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, O Holy Master, for just being right by our side through all the days of our life. Father God, even in the midst of our sin and wrongness, transgression, iniquities, Father God, you are still waiting like the awesome Father that you are. And God, you was waiting on us to return back unto you. And Lord, now we return as one without, but standing before an awesome Father who has all the resources in his hand. And right now, oh Holy Master, we just want to call on you, Jehovah Jireh. Lord, we want to call on you, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, because we know, O oh Holy Master, that you are our provider. And right now, O oh Lord God, we just want to thank you for providing us with the very breath of air that we breathe. Lord, we thank you for providing us with the bright sunshine, the moon, the stars, God, the sky itself, the birds, O oh Lord, that sing so graciously, Lord. God, all I'm trying to say is just thank you for creativity, Lord. Thank you for being the creator, the one who spoke it and it was so. Thank you, O Holy Master, for your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Even though, Lord, we, we tend to do wrong by you, God, but you still, Lord, you still love us like only you can. And Yahweh, right now, right now, Yahweh, we just want to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we just want to say, Lord, here we are. And God, we're going to open our lips and just say, we love you. We honor you, Father God. We worship and adore you, Lord. Not because the day is Sunday, Lord, and not because the all of the blessings you have given us but God just because you're God and we know Lord that if we don't have it Lord it's not because you don't have it God it's because you just haven't given it to us just yet so Lord we still going to love on you right now Lord we just want to love on you as best we can Lord because Lord we need you we need you now more than ever Lord just look at the state of the world and the state of our country, God. Just look at the state of us, God. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. And God, since the sanctuary is filled with your presence, we're just going to take a moment to bathe, bath in your presence, God. We're just going to stay right here, Lord where your spirit is. Lord, we don't want to leave your side. 
And Lord, I pray that your spirit, Lord, that all the believers experience. It is our prayer, O oh Holy Master, for that lost soul that's still in the world of sin. Lord, I may not be able to call them by name, but Father God, you know them. And I pray now, Lord, that you speak to their heart. Speak to their hearts, God. Bring conviction on their hearts, Lord, so that they may turn unto you, Lord, and experience the wonderful feeling that we the believers have, that we the children of the Most High God have. And Lord, I'm going to say, hey, man, hey, man, and hey, man. And now we thank Philip Carter and SOV for a song, I Love the Lord. Get that camera on them. I 
love the Lord. Let me tell you why. Why I love the Lord. Right early this morning, said, said, he touched my body with a finger of love. That's why I love him. Let me give you another reason why I love the Lord. He kept me close in my right mind. The old folks say, I got a reasonable portion of my heavenly strength. I'm wondering, is anybody here? Do you love the Lord? Look back on your life when you were down. God picked you when you were sad. Didn't God make you glad when you didn't have no money, money to pay your bills? Then he stepped in on time. Won't he step in on time? That's why I love the Lord. Yeah, I love the Lord. church. Y'all know how we do when the Holy Ghost gets you. You know how we drop that head and we. That means I love the Lord. Brother Bishop, talk to him with the key. this morning. So here's your encouragement. Just love on the Lord. Green Bethel. Let the Lord hear your love by giving him praise. I love the Lord. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Now don't get me wrong, I love you too. But I love the Lord. say that one more time. I love the Lord. And you know what? 
of my favorite saying. He's been mm, just that good. Miss Hazel, I'm talking about vegetable soup good. I'm just a whole country boy who know an awesome God. And I know what he has done for me, what he has done for you. And if you want to experience the Lord like we have, then call on Jesus. Confess, believe, and receive. Confess your sin, believe on Jesus, and receive the praise that we have. Oh, the angels can't praise the Lord like you can because Jesus didn't die for them. He died for you and I in the midst of our sin. God still died for us. So I love the Lord. You know, can't nobody make me get excited like the Lord can. You see, I'm just a little shy, old, quiet country boy. Right over the hill of a little town called Maysville. Didn't talk much, but when it come time to praising the Lord, I'm gonna be like Shout John. Hold my mule for a minute. You might be saying it don't take all that. Well, you don't know the Lord like I know the Lord. Maybe you're saying it don't take all that. Maybe it's because the Lord haven't saved you like he saved me. Maybe you just had a little sin and he just saved you a little bit. Therefore, you have a little praise. But if you have a lot, and the Lord saved you a lot, then you'll give him a lot of praise. I'm almost done now. The Holy Spirit has already preached the message. trying to tell you I love the Lord in front of all of these witnesses some people are saying some people are not but to you I want you to know that I love the Lord that's your testimony then let the world know that you love the Lord it's just something about that name called Jesus You know, it takes a lot for you to stand here in front of you and profess my love for Christ, especially for a man. Men, we have a problem telling our women that we love them. And we can see them. We can't see the Lord. But yet, here we are saying, Lord, I love you. Ladies, it's not just the men. You have a problem telling us that you love us. But you know what? We still love the Lord. And all the mothers, rest in peace, Anjanette. 
You know, every now and again, you have to tune us up. See, y'all, y'all new age children, you don't know what getting a tune up is. You get a time out. But I want to go old school and say we have to get a tune up every now and again. You know, sometimes the mechanic have to go up under the hood and take some stuff out. And you know, sometimes it requires not a gentle hand. It requires a little pull to bring it out. But it's because you love us and we love you back. Turn with us to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. And as you find it in your Bible, I want you to know there is a word from the Lord. The Lord wants to speak to you in this season. And he wants to do it to bring you some encouragement. The Lord said, I want you to tell the people this. Because all over the land and country, someone, somewhere, is in pain. So God said, just open your Bible and flip backwards. If you're starting in the New Testament, go back to the old. And I want you to go to that old boring book that people don't like to read because it's hard to pronounce all the names. And I said, Lord, I can't pronounce them neither. And you want me to go there? God said, I want you to turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. People are suffering right now. And they need to be reminded. God says, and we're reading from the New King James Version. We thank you to our musical staff. Brother Dejan, Brother Bishop, Brother Adrian, Brother B.B., Thank you to Deacon Macham, Deacon Davis. Thank you, Green Bethel Baptist Church. Thank you, Lady Hamrick. Thank you, Sister Pearl Sims, for ushering us in to a spirit of worship. God said in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And Jabez, he called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. And then Jabez said, Not yet, Lord, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Tell your neighbor that's an answered prayer right there. For subject matter, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Have you ever had a 
balloon, red balloon, blue balloon, yellow balloon, whatever color the balloons are. Have someone ever gave you a little small balloon and they ask you to blow it up? And the balloon is so small and hard to blow up. I'm talking about one of those balloons that when you blow, you try to blow it up, but it end up blowing your jaws up. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're blowing and you're huffing and you're blowing and, 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 and the balloon is not going nowhere, but your jaws just keep blowing and blowing. And then all of a sudden the air is starting to escape, and escape from your jaws. And you take the balloon and you try to stretch it and enlarge it so the air can go in. And then finally you blow the balloon up and your child run by and just push the air out again. <laughs> and now you have to start all over. But this time you're going to give it all you got and you just blow, blow, blow and it get bigger, bigger, bigger. And you don't stop because now you got it moving in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, the balloon pop, pow! And now you have to start all over again. You know why the balloon pop? Because you put yourself into enlarging your territory. The balloon pop because you put yourself into it. My brothers and sisters, if you put too much of you in enlarging your territory, it will pop. Fill your life with the presence of God. Look what Jabez did. Fill your life with the presence of God so you won't pop under pressure. First Chronicles is a book of descendants and genealogy. You can go there and get some names if you need some names to name somebody. But it's a book of descendants and genealogy. In it, the family tree is traced all the way back to Adam. You know how when you have a family reunion somewhere, there's a family tree. And at the top, it have the uh, patriarchs, matriarchs of the family and everybody else branch out from them. My brothers and sisters, the family tree is traced all the way back to that first man, Adam. Now in Chronicles, first Chronicles, chapter four, verses one through twenty three. The descendants of Judah, Sister Myra, is laid out. Jesus is described in Matthew 1, 1 and 6, and Luke 3, 31 through 34, and also in Revelations 5 and 5. Jesus is described as a member of the tribe of Judah. That means Jesus' lineage came through the tribe of Judah just like you and I came from whatever family we came from. Now, what I'm trying to say is your name means something. If you don't believe me, then watch this. My name used to be lost, but now it's saved. So all I'm trying to say is that your name means something. My name was condemned. But now my name is forgiven. So your name means something. Now this brings us to verse number 9 and 10. And we are introduced to a man named Jabez. The Bible says he was more honorable than his brother's. Now, think about that for a moment. The Bible, God's inspired word, is saying Jabez was more honorable than his brother. What would the Lord say about you? How would the Lord describe you? But Jabez, his mother, she named him Jabez because his birth was so painful. I mean, he came into the world causing so much pain. So much pain until his mother named him pain. Now, I was there when my second, born, when my sec second son was born. And I didn't know a woman go through so much pain 
And somebody should have gave me a warning, don't grab them by the hand. So I was there, and ladies, I held a hand trying to be the consoling husband and man that I am. Well, after about 30 seconds, it felt like every bone in my hand was about to explode under the pressure because of the pain of bringing birth into the world. And as I was, I was, and as I was sitting there, I looked to the doctor for help, and he just kind of smiled and shook his head. No, doctor, you told me a little bit too late. So we are trying to warn you, the person, the people who don't know God, we're trying to avoid you from experiencing the pain, the eternal pain that's caused by the lake of fire. We are trying to keep you from experiencing the pain of having eternal separation from the Lord. Jabez came into the world causing pain. The pronunciation of Jabez in the Hebrew, when you pronounce his name, it sounds like pain in the English language. Every time his mother called his name, she is reminded of the pain that he called. I understand that labor is painful, but to be reminded of that pain every time you call your child's name is a little bit too much. I often wonder who started nicknames. This ain't in the Bible, but I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Maybe Jabez was the first one that started nickname and said, don't call me Jabez, just call me J. <laughs> because the bears are bringing the pain, so just call me J. Maybe that's where nicknames came from. I don't know. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about to give you an illustration. Life is full of pain. Can we all agree? Sooner or later, you will experience some type, some form, some kind of pain. Some way you will experience some pain. Young man, you might be saying, well, I haven't felt no pain yet. You keep throwing rocks and them bees and watch what will happen. <laughs> Mothers, <laughs> keep picking up them fans if you want to. Talking about they can't get me. <laughs> Mothers, you have a special pain reliever that you put on after the band-aid. You know how a child will get a, they have a wreck and get skinned and bruised and, and they come to the mother. They, I mean, Deacon Mac, they just run right past the father and go to the mother for a band-aid. We can be standing there with a whole box, but they'll run past us and go to the mother. What is it about the mother's band-aid that's different from my band-aid? Well, the child is in so much pain. Jabez, no doubt Jabez, the one who caused so much pain, ran to his mother for a pain reliever. Now, after the band-aid, they'll put that little kiss on it and everything will be all right. So it must be a pain reliever in the kiss. So allow Jesus to give you a kiss and relieve your pain. Uh, run past the mother and go to the father but you can't go to the father except you come by the son so make a pit stop at Jesus Lord I'm in so much pain Lord I have failed down here in this mean no world and Lord when I fell somebody came by and they kicked me while I was down Lord I'm in so much pain Lord Johnson and Johnson Ben they won't do it Lord the Fauci Ouchie won't do it Lord I need a kiss from you Lord all I'm trying to say is life is full of pain and Jesus is the pain reliever. You know, it wasn't like that for Jabez. His very name said pain. It reminded his mother that she was in a lot of pain when she bore him. So Jay, can I just call him Jay? So Jay, now Jay realized of the pain that he caused. He wanted it just to go away. Now since we have established the connection of Jabez to pain, it's necessary to remind you 
that pain has a purpose. Thank you, Dr. Sims. Reverend Dr. Chauncey Sims, thank you for teaching us that point. So now let me remind you that pain has a purpose. And if it's bad enough, Dr. Hamry, you know, like them knees, you'll go to the doctor to seek medical attention. Sister Duty, you tell Kurt that you let him know that sometimes you have to go to the doctor when you're in so much pain to seek some medical attention. My brothers, though, I'm not talking about that medical doctor, Sister Nisha. You might have your degree, but you can't help me with this much kind of pain. I must go to Dr. Jesus and get a pain reliever that'll last more than 12 hours. And I only have to take him one time. And you know that means that one time when I gave my life to the Lord. Now pain is not unbearable. Pain is bearable. And when I can't take it myself. Jesus reached way down and he grabbed and he kissed me and make it feel better. Now, here's another point for you. If you can feel pain, it means that you're still alive. So maybe there is a such thing called good pain. Because good pain it lets me know that I still have an opportunity to call on the name of Jesus. Now if I'm in so much pain. And I can no longer feel pain. I'm not talking about because I'm, they, they give me some medicine to put me to sleep. I'm talking about I can't feel pain because I went to the eternal sleep. Where I won't wake up no more. If you can feel pain it means you're still alive. And you have an opportunity to get right with the Lord. By accepting the sin debt that his John Jesus paid for you and I on the cross. Now you see on the way to the cross, Jesus endured pain. While he was hanging on the cross, Jesus endured pain. While they pierced him in his side, Jesus endured pain. When the sun didn't shine and the father turned from the Lord, Jesus experienced pain. My brothers and sisters, but the good part of that pain that Jesus felt was that you and I, we are redeemed. I'm trying to enlarge your territory by telling you about that man named Jesus. So, pain, it does have a purpose. Am I right about it? Sometimes we won't even come to the Lord except that he calls us some pain. You know, we, when we feel pain, then we know to come to the Lord to relieve the pain. Now, let's go back to Jabez. Watch the text. Let me show you what we're talking about. Jabez, God will use pain to elevate you to your divine purpose. Just look at verse number 10. Jabez prayed. Jabez, he called on a name. He called on a God of Israel. You see, some of us, we will experience pain and we still won't call on Jesus. Jabez prayed and he called on God of Israel. The point is, when you're in pain, call on the Lord. Pain will draw you closer to the Lord. Pain, it will allow you to depend on God. Pain, it will allow you to know God as Jehovah Jireh. He is a provider. Pain will allow you to know God as a pain reliever. Pain, good God Almighty, it will allow you to call on the one and true God. The God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. All I'm trying to say is pain will make you call on the right person. 
And I'm not talking about calling on the pastor. I'm talking about the one who sent the pastor. I'm talking about pain will make you call on Jesus. Pain will enlarge your territory. Now that's a head scratcher right there, so just keep on listening. Next, we learn from Jabal that your territory is limited to boundaries. Can we all agree to that? It's a limited to boundaries and borders. It's limited to your vision. Now, here is something for you. Push the boundaries. Push the borders. Now, let me put a little asterisk by that. Now, don't go home and move your fence and take up the neighbor property. Talking about the pastor said, push the borders. Push the boundaries and enlarge my territory. Now, I don't do that. If it's not your land, don't go taking somebody else's stuff. That's not the point that we're trying to make. Do it if you want to. You be in jail. Tell my pastor, you said it. <laughs> then I'll tell you, well, you should have kept on listening. <laughs> Messiah and Jayla, good to see you today. You... Push the boundaries last night on that stage with your talent competition. And by entering the pageant and just showing the world what can you do when you trust in the Lord. I mean, one and two, Jayla won Miss Ballin Springs High School and Messiah came in the first runner up. What I'm trying to say is that anything is possible with the Lord. So push the boundaries. Push beyond the boundaries and enlarge your territory. If you want more, then push the envelope and go get your blessings. And I want you to know there's blessings with an S on the end. Because there's more than one. The point is. You must push beyond the natural boundaries and enter the realm of heavenly, even enter the realm of heavenly supernatural boundaries. So push the envelope. How do you push the envelope? You say yes to the Lord and watch what will happen. Soon as you say yes to the Lord, your territory will increase at the twinkling of an eye. It'll increase because you'll have that eternal home not made by man's hand. Push beyond the natural and go into the supernatural. And you know what? Faith, faith is the key to unlock the door. And when you open the door, like the doors at the sanctuary, when you open the door, you gain access to the contents that's behind the door. You know, you have a jar and it got something good in it and you want to get the lid off and you're trying to gain access and you can't get in it. You can't get in it, Lady Hemrick, so you pass it to someone else and say, open it for me. Well, it's not like that with heaven. You're trying to gain access. You can't get in. You can pass it to me. I can't open it for you. So give it to Jesus and say, God, open the door for me. I have faith in you, Lord. Open the door, Lord. Open the medicine bottle, Lord. And give me the pain reliever. What I'm trying to say, Lord, is give me more of you and less of me. Give me you, Lord Jesus. Now, since we know that faith is the key to open a door, the door is Jesus the Christ. <laughs> so in order to enlarge your territory, you got to do like Jabez. Jabez prayed with faith. Look what he said in verse 10. Jabez said, Oh, that you would bless, that you would bless indeed and enlarge my territory. And tell me that he knows something about the Lord. Now since we know that faith is the key. Jesus is the door. Let me just tie it all together for you. You know how they gave you them roses. They had that little bow on it. And they tied it together and make it look all nice and pretty. So let me tie it together for you. And make it look nice and pretty as best I can. Here's your bow tie. Faith is Jesus. 
faith in Jesus will open a door and allow you to gain access to your full potential. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes we don't reach our full potential because we're too busy trying to open the wrong door. And we're sitting there, we're trying to pick the lock. We're already trying to open the wrong door. The key we have don't fit, so we try to pick the lock. And if we can't pick the lock, you know, sometimes we'll get forceful and just break in the door and break in and find something that we don't supposed to get. I'm trying to help you now. Faith in Jesus will open a door and it will allow you to gain access to your full potential. A direct result of your full potential. What is the result? The result is enlarged territory. Trust in Jesus to enlarge your territory. Look, your territory is only limited to your vision. Watch this. Now don't go out there and be looking across Calpin and Packler Highway talking about I can see all the way down there to my camp road so all oh, that's mine. Not the wrong kind of vision. Wrong kind of vision. Your territory is limited by your vision. Ponder on that for a moment. I wear glasses. So does that mean I can see and have more territory? <laughs> Somebody said, you probably could see somebody's soul with them on. I said, well, maybe you're right. <laughs> In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, God told Abraham to go. Abraham, he obeyed God and he went. You know the story. The result was Abraham gained an inheritance and was made a great nation. <laughs> Just because he heard the Lord, he obeyed the Lord, and his territory was enlarged. So if you want to enlarge your territory, hear the Lord, obey the Lord, trust in the Lord, and your territory will grow beyond borders. That's why your territory is only limited to your vision. Abraham didn't see where he was going, but he was going. Don't depend on the natural eye. You got to see with the eye of faith. Abraham could not see his future, but he put his trust in the Lord. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean that you can't have it. I think I received that word and said one more time. Just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean that you can't have it. Sometimes you won't see no way out, but you still have a way out. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 11 and 24, it says that every place the soul of your foot treads shall be yours. That's a prophetic word for you. The word of God says every place you step shall be yours because you will enlarge your territory by trusting the Lord. And if you trust the Lord, you'll gain an inheritance that's so much better than the inheritance that any man would give you. Look, let me show you what I'm trying to say here. That Jesus is the one who has the authority in the earth realm and in the heaven realm. Everything that was made was made by him. So if you have access to the Lord, then you have access to everything that was made. And everything that was made was made by Him. So wherever, good God Almighty, wherever your feet hit, it's yours and your territory has been in line. So let me tell you what I'm trying to say is you, you got to step out of pain. And step into your destiny. Your territory is wherever you place your feet. Am I right about it? So when you leave the church house, 
Make sure that you're stepping in the right direction. You don't want to step on the land that God didn't give you. You want to walk and let the Lord order your steps. Am I right about it? If God will order your steps, and then I want you to know that He will. He will uh, increase your territory. Uh, the land is yours uh, because you can take it by faith. Am I right about it? Uh, you must believe in uh, and accept Jesus uh, as your Lord and Savior. And then uh, he will, uh, he will, uh, good God Almighty, uh, he will uh, expand uh, your territory. Uh, now here is, uh, here is, here is the application. Uh, don't focus on enlarging your territory uh, by gaining substance. Uh, you know uh, how sometimes uh, we'll try to gain a lot uh, just to say I got a lot. Uh, well, if you keep on, uh, the stuff will turn to junk. Uh, am I right about it? If you don't believe me, uh, just go look in anybody's storage building uh, and you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, that the stuff was stuff uh, it was substance uh, but over time uh, it changed uh, to nothing but junk uh, so if you want to enlarge your territory uh, then trust in the Lord uh, am I right about it uh, are you praying with me uh, Jesus Jesus what I'm trying to tell you is uh, that if you seek the presence of God uh, everything will be alright uh, Sisters uh, without presence, uh, it ain't nothing but a bunch of junk. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, so let me tell you, uh, earthly possessions uh, without Jesus, uh, it ain't worth having. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, so give me Jesus uh, and everything, uh, and everything uh, will be uh, all right. Uh, give me Jesus, uh, and then uh, I'll be able to uh, bear the power. Uh, am I right about it? Jesus, Jesus, the lily of the valley, uh, Mary's little baby, uh, Jesus, uh, that Jesus right there, just give me him, uh, he's the antidote for pain. The cure for pain, the cure for pain is the presence of God, and if you don't believe me, then look at the threefold blessing. Look at that verse number 10 one more time. In verse number 10, we see that God, if you're with me, uh, Jabez said, uh, God, if you're with me, uh, I know that trouble won't last always. Uh, so Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, if you're with me, Lord, uh, trouble, uh, it won't last uh, always. Uh, so enlarge my territory uh, by giving me more of you uh, and less of me. Uh, am I right about it? <laughs> Look at the three, four blessing uh devil's blessing number one uh, so let's go uh, to blessing number two uh, god if your hand is with me uh, i will not cause pain uh, am i right about it look at the verse uh, god if you give me yourself uh, if you give me your hand uh, everything will be all right uh, if you give me you jesus uh, then i have uh, i have all that i need uh, am i right about it give me your hand uh, you take my substance uh, but give me your hand uh, am i right about it Yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, maybe you need another example. Uh, so come here, Job. Uh, come and tell him about it. Job went through into the storm uh, and he had a lot in the middle of the storm. Uh, Job lost it all. But at the end, uh, at the end, uh, when Job came out of the storm, uh, he had more than what he had uh, in the beginning of the storm. So Jesus, Jesus will multiply and enlarge your territory. The cure, if you still didn't get it, the cure for pain 
is the presence of God. That's what we have as believers. Seek and hold on to the presence of God and your territory will be enlarged. It'll be limitless because God is limitless. Everything that was made was made by Him. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. If you want to enlarge your territory, rest on your feet. Trust in the Lord. This time is for you. Maybe you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. You don't know which way to go. You have had so much pain. You know, Jabez said, give me your hand. So to you, God is saying, take my hand. Let's go for a walk. All the believers, all the saved folk here at Green Bethel and across the land and country, we want to walk with you. And we want to offer you Jesus. Let's walk. Let's take a stroll to the park, through the park. And we may even take some pictures along the way. Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's walk. Romans 5 and 12 says, Wherefore by sin entered the world through one man and death by sin. Let's walk a little bit further. Romans 6 and 23 teaches us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Just walk with us and enlarge your territory. Eternal life through Jesus the Christ. Let's walk on down to Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. Now since we're walking, let's walk on down. I hear you tuning up, Brother Adrian. Let's walk on down to that verse number 10. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, not with the mind, but with the heart. Sister Jeta, Lord, operate on my heart so I can believe. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Walk with me a little bit longer. Walk with us. Hold the Lord's hand. Walk with us as we lead you to Him. And He's standing there with outstretched hands waiting on you. Romans 10 and 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what we want to present to you today. Romans 10 and 13 And here is my shout for whosoever <laughs> shall call upon the name of the Lord Whosoever is me and you, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that means your territory was just enlarged. Now if you want what we have, if the Word of God has brought 
you to a place of conviction and repentance then just say the simple prayer it's not the prayer of Jabez but this is your prayer Lord I confess my sin to you somebody want to get saved Deacon Mack and they don't know how confess believe and receive Lord I confess my sin to you Lord, I confess my need for a Savior. Lord, I believe in my heart that you died for me. Lord, I know that you are God's only begotten Son. Lord, I believe in my heart and I know God that God raised you from the dead. And Lord, since I have confessed and believed, now I receive salvation and eternal life. If you have prayed that prayer from your heart, you are saved. Now ask God for a church home. You're welcome here. There's a place for you in the body of Christ. But ask the Lord, is this where you want me to go? Because if the Lord sent you, I know you'll come and be fruitful. Amen. Somebody sing us a song. A living testimony. What I could have been dead and gone. But Lord, you let me live on. Oh, I am. Oh, yes, I am. A living testimony. I'm still 
I'm still alive. Oh. My sister went on, oh, but I'm still alive. Oh, My brother went on, oh, but I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Oh, I thank the Lord. I'm still alive. Thank you, Sister Fanny Jada, for telling us that we're still alive. But you know what? If you haven't accepted Jesus, you haven't begun to live yet. But soon as you accept him as your Lord and Savior, then your life will be that much more fuller. <laughs>